welcome back everyone unknown soldier here with another life in the military commentary uh before we get talking about that though a little bit about the gameplay here uh i ended up going 55 and 0 i stole the other team's anti-air gun and it absolutely went beast on these guys i think they're a bunch of scrub muffins to be honest <laughs> um i had my friend kyle over and he had never seen me play Battlefield. He had, I don't think he'd ever watched anyone else play Battlefield before. And I was kind of trying to tell him, like, you know, I was pretty decent at the game, but he didn't really know, like, how good I was, I guess. So I was really trying to impress him and um, just do as you know, well as I could. So the whole time I was playing, I was super try-hard mode. And this, I ended up going 55-0, and 0, and this was the start of a 203 kill streak that I had. Um, it was 55 and 0 this game. The next game I went 59, 59 and 0. Game after that I went 41 and 0, and the last game I went 44 and 0. Until uh, and then the map after that I went like 7 and 0 or something until someone else got me. And, and yeah, <laughs> oh, it was a it was an epic kill streak, guys. I was playing super cautious. They they couldn't find a way to take me out. But I'm in the AA right now, so I'm about to go just absolutely beast mode. This is the uh, anti-air gun, it's called, but it's more like the anti-everything gun. This thing just dematerializes everything in the map. So, hope you guys enjoy this little gameplay here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about my life in the military for now. Uh, where I left off, I had just finished passing my national registry test to get my EMT certificate for the, uh, the reserves. So, like, obviously this was a huge deal for me. I had spent the last month and a half really grinding out, sweating, like, literally every night I only got about three hours of sleep, three or four hours of sleep, because I would just stay up till, um, from like six till midnight, I would stay up studying, and then I would go to sleep and wake up around 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Uh, and go to PT and then from PT after PT we had breakfast and then we go to uh, from class from like 7.30 to like 5.30 in the afternoon and from there I would go get dinner and then study the rest of the night like rinse and repeat for like a month and a half except on the weekends and even on the weekends I still studied my butt off uh, that was like one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life so eventually like I said I passed got my registry completed so me and my friends, I had never, I hadn't been out on the town, I hadn't been, I hadn't seen downtown San Antonio yet. So that's the first thing we wanted to go do, is we wanted to go out and explore the town. And that's uh, where I first, like, I called all my family, <laughs> I was, like, talking to them, telling my past. So I'm sitting there, it's absolutely beautiful downtown. Um, for those of you in the U.S., if you've never been to San Antonio, or downtown San Antonio, um, it is awesome. Obviously... Um, after you graduate boot camp, the, your base lets you go out in the town. You get to go downtown for a little bit. But it's mostly during the day. You have to be in uniform, and it's really hot out, and um, it doesn't look as good as it does at nighttime. At nighttime, uh, on the river walk is what it's called. It's a little river that runs through the city on like a lower level um, from the street. So you can like walk down a set of stairs, and there's this little river. And people have stores set up on the river there. Um, little different things that you can buy, you can, like different restaurants, and it looks awesome. They have like little palm trees, different little clubs, bars, and just it looks really cool. And you have these awesome looking lights shining off, reflecting off of the water. At one of the uh, the ends of the river there, there's actually like a little mall. It actually wasn't a little mall, it was a pretty big mall. It was like a four story mall there, and there was like. Um, I have pictures on my Facebook of it, but it just looks, it looks amazing. You can, like, when you're in the mall, you can see the river walk there. You can take boat rides on it. And I think they fined you, like, $500 if you fall in the water for contaminating it. It's kind of funny. But it was just, I've, I never had more fun in my life just hanging out there on the river with my friends. Um, so that was the, <laughs> the river walk there. Uh, it's a, okay, I got a funny story to tell you guys, though. Um... When I was on the Riverwalk one time, it was on the Riverwalk. It was some random club. I went with uh, with my friends, and I didn't know it, but it was like a gay bar there. And I went with a couple of girls, so I didn't feel like completely awkward, but it was still like really, really weird because there was a lot bunch of gay guys there, and I didn't really know what was going on. So I'm just chilling out there, and um, 
some somebody comes up from behind me and grabs my butt so i'm like whoa what's going on right so i turn around i don't see anyone i see this guy walking away from me like he didn't even acknowledge the fact that he did it and he turns around and looks at me in the face and he's then he goes he's like oh wait are you straight and i said oh yeah he goes oh and he had like the, the like the saddest look on his face i i felt bad for him i guess because i'm i'm not gay <laughs> um but it was just a funny experience you guys had to be there. It was just, uh, it was weird. But anyway, so, past my registry, having fun on the river walk, just enjoying myself. But the next part of the course was the nursing. This was more of like the relaxing part of the class. Uh, the course, I should say, it was an extra two months. And it was it's not even half as hard as it was for the EMT. It was mostly just like textbook stuff and a lot of it you just pass just from like remembering what's going on. Um, it's just, you know, basic nursing stuff like how to clean up people, different um, procedures that they use, and just for like your in hospital stay kind of stuff. So that's what we did for the next, um, the next two months there. And of course, since it was so easy, I ended up spending more and more time with my friends on the river walk. Uh, just wasting all of my money away uh, To get downtown you had to take a taxi unless you knew someone with a car I didn't know anybody so literally every time I went downtown. I had to put down $15 uh, It was just one way you saw to spend $50 $15 to get back So it was about $30 total uh, round trip unless you went with somebody you could help pay or you know that whole deal so It was a lot of fun I probably I don't know if I would change anything. I just wish I you know could have spent my money a little bit more wisely. You know I sp I went on the river walk probably a few too many times. There was a lot of lot of things to do there. There was this restaurant called Bogo de Chao, right? And the way it works is you put fifty dollars down. They have a salad bar, and the salad bar is basically just to trick you into eating salad, right? You say, how can you eat salad? How can you, like, how is that a bad thing? Look, okay, so you put your $50 down. And what the deal is, you can eat all the steak you want for as long as you want. So after we graduated the EMT part of the class, like, I'd say almost all of my class, we went downtown to this restaurant, about 20 of us. We put all, you know, not all of us pitched in together because obviously each of us had to pay our own, um, our own bill. So we each put fifty dollars down, and we ate steak for about two and a half hours, just sitting there. And this wasn't bad steak, like just generic steak that you just eat like as much as you want of. This was the probably the best restaurant I've ever been to in my life. I could not stop talking about it after I went there. The service there was so good. The waiters there, they didn't let your cup get less than half like empty like if they saw it even like a third they would just come by fill it up with water the way the way the way the restaurant worked you didn't get up off of your seat to get food unless it was a salad because obviously they're not going to make your salad for you they would come around with uh like all these different steaks on um like those big like skewers or whatever and they would slice off a piece of steak for you depending on like what kind of steak, like medium rare, um, how you wanted to cook, um, like filet mignon, all these different kinds of steak. It was just excellent, excellent food. Oh my gosh, I wish I could go back there. I don't even mind putting the money down. The service was that good. The food was that good. The way it works is, is you, they give you a piece of paper and you flip it to the green side if you want them to come serve you like they'll come ask you if you want more food if you have it flipped to the green side if you have it to the red side that means you want to take a break or you got enough food on your plate because you can just leave it green for a while and you can fill up your plate with a bunch of steak and you know you don't even have to take it to red you can just leave it on green for a while like the whole night but you know eventually you know you get enough food on your plate you kind of just want to take a break for a second kind of like let your body digest it and you want to get the full fifty dollars worth of food and literally i think i went there twice while i was there each time i probably ate around 200 or 300 dollars worth of steak uh, me and my buddy his name was caraway we both 
ate just our heart's desire of like so much food. It was just awesome. I wish you guys could go. Some of you guys might know what I'm talking about. Some of you might not. But I recommend this restaurant if you've ever heard of it and you're kind of wondering if it's worth it. That is definitely, definitely worth it. So obviously I had, I had great times in San Antonio. Um, I don't know if I'd ever want to go back because it's, you know, San Antonio. I don't know. It is fun, but I don't know. I kind of enjoy being home. Obviously here making videos for you guys. Uh, so the next part, the next step to my training, once we got done with the nursing, I completed that. They had to send us to different bases to work at the military hospitals for these different bases. Obviously, there was about 40 of us and they can't send us all to the same base because not all 40 of us can work in the same hospital because they would be, you know, very unproductive. A lot of us would be just sitting around doing nothing. So they sent us all the different hospitals and I was kind of hoping they would send me to the one I was closest to, like my, my house was, because there was one in Ohio uh, that's called Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. That's the one I'm stationed at right now. And I knew I would eventually get stationed there, but I didn't know if they were going to send me there for training or not. And thankfully they did. They actually sent me there for training. So it was late October, and in San Antonio, was, even in October, it's still about 70, 80 degrees outside, right? They sent us to Wright Patterson in Ohio, and it was raining. It was like raining ice, like snow. It wasn't even like, it was probably about 33 degrees or so, but it was still like raining. It was so cold. It was horrible. And I didn't have any clothing with me that were like sweatshirts because I had just come from San Antonio, Texas. Like, you, you didn't have sweatshirts. All you had was like t shirts. Uh, from being out in the sun all the time so I had nothing to wear I had to like, call up my family and have them drop off some clothes for me you know how that is so uh, we get there we had to report to um, the hospital and find out where we we're gonna work at and there's so many different you know different places in the hospital you can work there's the emergency room there's the ICU uh, different kinds of ICUs the SIU the like the actual literal ICU and there's surgery and I'd probably say that surgery was the, probably the most interesting part of the hospital that I worked at um, just seeing people um, cut into human beings I actually saw a someone I don't know if it was like a brain it wasn't it wasn't a brain surgery I think they were removing some cancerous tissue on this guy's scalp they removed about two inches worth of um, skin on, off the top of this guy's head and the, what would happen was the surgeon, he reached his finger, like, under the guy's scalp, and he, like, loosened up. He, like, moved his finger, like, underneath his skin there, and he, he pulled it together, stapled it, and stitched it up together. So, basically, the removed tissue was just, like, thrown away, and then they didn't use it. It was really cool. It was weird. Definitely weird seeing that happen, just seeing, um, <laughs> uh, you know. A surgery like that I saw a knee surgery all kinds of stuff the emergency room was cool too riding in the ambulance um, getting called out to different you know different emergencies one of the emergencies was some of them are pretty comical one of them was a car accident they said this old lady uh, she like slammed on her brakes at a yellow light and the two people behind her got in an accident she just drove off and the guys behind her were <laughs> just mad they were fine but yeah that was definitely interesting I'll talk more about my life in the military in a future commentary it's almost coming to an end there's a few more things I have to talk about but I hope you guys enjoyed this let me know what you guys think if you guys are interested subscribe for more I'll catch you guys in the next one have a nice day peace